Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you the suspenseful play called Fear Paints a Picture, starring Miss Lana Turner. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wine. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wine. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live. To your happiness in entertaining guests. To your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant. As Roma Wines bring you a remarkable tale of suspense. And with fear paints a picture... And with the performance of Hollywood's most glamorous young star, Miss Lana Turner, Roma Wines hope indeed to keep you in... Ascent! There is a picture hanging on a wall. You look at it casually. An extraordinary picture. You'll say it's skillfully done. Hmm. Look at those fine brush strokes. Look at those superb colors. But isn't the subject matter a little bizarre? It's something more than just bizarre. You see, <laughs> it was that picture that first convinced me that I was insane. <laughs> But let me begin from the beginning. In his last will and testament, my father made me heir to all his considerable fortune, except that... Uh, well, uh, here, you read the will. Uh, <clears throat> I, Benjamin Powell, hereby request that after my death, my daughter Julia live in my old San Francisco house with Mr. Harvey Lyons, my lifelong friend, until her 23rd birthday at which date all my worldly belongings will come into her possession, provided that nothing untoward happens to her by that time. But in the event that she is incapable of taking over my estate upon her 23rd birthday, I hereby appoint Harvey and Laura Lyons as my final heirs, there being no other living blood relatives, and trust to their judgment that they will take care of Julia adequately and with kindness. Signed, Benjamin Powell. Three months later, seated around the huge, ornate fireplace of that dark, musty living room, we were three silent people. Harvey was reading his newspaper, Laura was knitting with nibbled fingers, and I... I stared with unseen eyes at an open book. You're not reading, Julia. I, uh... I'm not concentrating. Are you feeling all right, dear? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm all right. You do look a little tired, Julia. Perhaps you'd better get some rest. I'm not tired, Harvey. I... I've been wanting to ask... In a week, Julia will be 23. Isn't that wonderful, Harvey? Next Tuesday is her birthday. Why, yes, I think... we'll have a party. I'll get old Tom and his fiddle, and we'll have a real old-fashioned party. Harvey. Huh? What did Father mean by the will? The will. Perhaps you'd better go to bed. You look a little pale, Julia. The will said that I might not be able to take over the estate by my 23rd birthday. What does it mean? I don't remember that. I I didn't read the, the will very carefully. Oh, yes, you did, Harvey. You know what I'm talking about. Perhaps we'd better discuss it in the morning. You're tired. It's no use, Laura. I've got to know. Now, you're a very high-strung girl, Julia. And I'd rather not upset you before bedtime. Upset me? You, well, you sort of get moody very often. Now, Harvey. Laura, I'm not going to bed until I find out what all this means. I've got to find out. You don't like your room, do you? No. No, I don't. It's big. The wallpaper. I, I don't like the pictures on the wall. There's nothing wrong with a big room. Everyone prefers a large room. Everyone likes pictures on the wall. Well, maybe it's the kind of pictures. Yes, it's the pictures. They, 
They rub me the wrong way. You see, your feelings about things are different. Different from the, uh, the feelings of normal people. Oh. Normal people? I can't stand this torturous way of telling her. I'll tell you, Julia. Your mother died in an asylum. She went mad after her 23rd year. It's been in the family for generations. But I never saw my mother. I, I thought... We didn't want to tell you this. I wish you hadn't. But you forced us. You mean I'm liable to become insane? Well, you, you see, any one of us can become insane. I. There's I... nothing wrong with me. I'm perfectly all right. I'm as sane as anyone. Being high strung doesn't make me mad. I don't like it here. I don't like this house. I'm saying. I'm saying. Of course you are, Julia. There's nothing the matter with you. You'll be all right. Your father wasn't sure, that's all. You're as sane as any one of us. Come along. I'll take you to your room. We'll have a cup of tea together. Calm down. Is she asleep? No, Harvey. She's reading. Well, that must be Dr. Bow. I'll open the door. How do you do, Mr. Lyon? Is it Dr. Bow? That's right. And this is my wife, Laura. How do you do? I'm glad to meet you, Doctor. Let me take your thing. We'll have your room ready in a few minutes. Thank you. It's very good of you. Here, sit down. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Well, thank you. I will. Well, how's Julia? Oh, she's been very moody lately, very moody. Hmm? I've heard her talking to herself very often. Well, that's nothing. All of us talk to ourselves once in a while. Uh, I don't know, Doctor. I don't think she's very stable. Mr. Powell described Julia's case to me just before he died. I had occasion to observe her just once. You knew Mr. Powell well? Oh, yes. For quite a number of years, I treated his wife. Poor Mrs. Powell. She went mad. And how poor Julia... I wouldn't make that comparison, Mr. Lyon. So far, there's no basis for any such theory. Well, then, Julia just has strong dislikes. Took a hate to the pictures in her room. Oh, pictures, eh? I'd, uh, I'd like to go up and see her if she's not asleep. Well, I guess it's all right. She's not asleep yet. Her room's a second from the right. As you reach the top of the stairs. Thank you. I'll just stop in for a few minutes. Hello, Julia. You remember me, don't you? No. No, not exactly. I, I, I guess maybe I've seen your face. I, I don't know. Oh, I'm Dr. Barrow, a friend of your father's. I treated your mother. My mother? Now, now, don't be alarmed. I'm staying with your guardians for a few weeks. I'm sure you're going to be all right. Do you mind if I come in for a few minutes? Hmm? No. No, I guess not. Well, this is a fine room, Julia. A very comfortable one. I don't like it. It's too big. It, it makes me lonely. Oh, nonsense. You're just imaginative. You think someone might be hiding in here while you're asleep, don't you now, huh? It, it isn't that. Don't you like that picture, Julia? What? What picture? The one you're staring at. Oh, it's an unpleasant picture. It gives me nightmares. Look at it. That frightful-looking man about to come through the doorway. And the unsuspecting girl sitting in a chair with her back towards him. <laughs> He's not frightful-looking at all. It's just a black scarf around his neck. He's about to kill her. You certainly have a vivid imagination. I'm sure the artist had no such idea in mind. That picture has a horrible fascination for me. I, I just can't take my eyes away from it. Well, last night I... I dreamed that the man in the picture came through the door with a knife in his hands and, and killed the girl. Oh, it was an awful dream. It was only a dream. But if I take that painting off the wall, Julia, you'll find other things to be afraid of, dear. You've got to conquer your fears or they'll conquer you, Julia. Now, now, you do as I say. Forget about this picture. Get a good night's sleep. There's nothing like a good night's sleep to lift the spirits. If the picture fascinates you, well, keep on looking at it, but don't be afraid of it, Julia. Will you do that now? Hmm? Well, yes, Dr. Darrow, if you say so. Ah, that's fine. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Julia. 
Good night. <laughs> For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star Miss Lana Turner, whom you've heard in the first act of Here Paints a Picture by Sigmund Miller, which is Roma Wines' presentation tonight of Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Elsa Maxwell is recognized internationally as an authority on gracious living. The other day, she said this about wine and wartime food rationing. Listen. I find that people who know one simple secret of delicious meals aren't bothered much by food rationing. That secret is to enjoy good Roma wine with food. For instance, I recently had dinner where the main dish was kidney bean casserole. And to give this simple food a delightful party flavor, my hostess served cool Roma California Burgundy. Everyone remarked about its wonderful bouquet and aroma, and about the way that good Roma Burgundy added enjoyment to our plain meal. Such added enjoyment is one of the reasons why more and more pe- people serve delightful Roma wine. That's a grand suggestion from Elsa Maxwell. So why not try Roma California Burgundy with your dinner tomorrow night? You'll enjoy its tart piquancy, its fruity, robust taste. The happy result of selecting luscious wine grapes from California's choicest vineyards, guiding them to perfection by the ancient wine skill of Roma's famed wineries. Good Roma wines never vary. They are always enjoyable, yet cost only pennies a glass. Remember... More Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A. Roma Wine. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Lana Turner as Julia Powell in Fear Paints a Picture. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. About midnight in my room, the large room with its many pictures, I was dreaming, dreaming again of the man in the pictures, and the figure with the flowing black scarf was alive, and his hands grew longer and longer, and there were footsteps, footsteps over my head, and then, then I was awake, wide awake, with my eyes staring at it, and on the wall, I Oh. Oh. <laughs> Julia, what happened? What are you doing out here in the hall? Oh, oh, that together, Julia. Oh, that man, that man. What man? The man in the picture, he's moved. What do you mean? The picture, the man at the door. He's not at the door. He's inside the room. Oh, you must have been dreaming. Oh, dream. Ju- Julia, what's happened to you? He moved. I saw it. He's not outside the door anymore. He's inside. Now, 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 Julia, let me... It wasn't a dream. The thunder woke me. And I heard footsteps coming from the ceiling. And then I looked at the picture. The picture I told you I didn't like, Doctor. The man was inside the room. That's hardly possible, Julia. Figures in pictures can't move. Of course not. It was just a bad dream. No, it's true. I saw it. All right, come along, Julia. We'll all take a look at the picture. Oh, no. No, I, I don't want to go back into the room. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. We'll all go with you, dear. Oh. Yes, come on, Julia. Don't be frightened. You've got to fight off these old delusions. Here, give me your hand. Come along. Now, which picture is it? The one, the one near the bed. Oh, yes, the picture of Ralph Powell. Your family was always very proud of it. Well, there it is. It's the same as I saw it a few hours ago. Look at it, Julia. Well, I can't believe it. The man with the black scarf is still outside the door. And will stay there, Julia, until the picture crumbles to dust. Oh, but I... I was so sure. I I saw him inside the room. 
approaching the girl and, and then the footsteps. Dreams can be very vivid and there are no footsteps coming from the storeroom. Oh, uh, I must be out of my mind. I could have... If won. Julia wants to, I'll take the picture out of her room. No, no, I don't think it's wise. Julia, you, you will have to fight these unreasonable fears. Never give in to them. I'll go crazy if I keep looking at that picture. It might be the other way around, Julia. If you run away from it, the mental disease prevalent in your family will take a firm hold in you. Hmm? You'll get worse and worse. As Dr. Barrow says, you should be afraid of your own shadow. No. You should be afraid of everything, of everyone you meet. No. Afraid to be alone. Afraid to be with people. Afraid of yourself. No. Afraid of your own clutching fingers. No, no, don't tell me anymore. Please, Mr. Lyons, please. There's no need for this kind of talk. Look at the picture, Julia. It's nothing but some paint on a canvas with a frame around it. There's nothing about it that can harm you. The danger lies in yourself. You've got to keep staring at it as often as you can. By candlelight, in the dark, uh, until you learn to laugh at it. It won't be easy. Well, I... I'll try. That's fine. I knew you had courage. I'll get you a sedative so that you'll be able to sleep. Oh, but I... I'll be all right in the morning. I, I'm sure I'll be all right. And I was all right for a few days. The figure in the picture remained motionless, and I heard no more footsteps. Until one evening... Well, Julia, it's 11 o'clock. And you know what Dr. Barrow says. <laughs> I'm not at all sleepy, Laura. I, I'd much rather stay up for a while. You see, I'm in the middle of a fascinating it's story. Is I... wrong, Julia? What? No. No, of course not. Everything's fine, Laura. You're afraid to go to sleep, aren't you, Julia, dear? No. No, it isn't that. Is that picture bothering you again? Oh, yes. Last night, I heard footsteps again. The sound woke me in the figure in the picture. It moved. It moved closer to the girl. Oh, how terrible. We thought you were over it. Well, I took some sleeping tablets and I fell asleep again. And in the morning, well, the picture was the same as ever. I see. Oh, Laura, do, do you think I'm crazy? Oh, of course not. You're as sane as I am. Tell me the truth. I must know. Well, you're just nervous and high strung. And you have a vivid imagination, and that's all. Oh, you're trying to soothe me. Why didn't you tell the doctor that you thought the picture moved again? Well, I... I was ashamed. Well, you shouldn't be ashamed. Dr. Barry was here to help you get well, and I'm sure that... Uh, hello, Laura. Well, I've arranged to have old Tom and his fiddle here tomorrow night for Julia's birthday. And I've invited the Grovers, and they'll be delighted to come. That is, if Julia's feeling well. Julia, you should be in bed at after 11. She's afraid to go to sleep. Oh, please, Laura. It's uh, the picture again, isn't it? Yes, Doctor. It moved again. At, at least I thought it moved. Oh, but I went back to sleep. Well, well, that's an improvement. You didn't get hysterical and tried to run away like the last time. Come, Julia. I'll go with you to your room. Um... Perhaps Laura can sleep in my room tonight. Hmm? Oh, just tonight. You see, I'll feel a lot more comfortable. And tomorrow night, well, I'll be able to face it alone much better. Well, Julia, that would be an admission of defeat, you know. But if you... Oh, well, all right. If you think it's best. Good night. Good night, Julia. Keep up your courage. Doesn't look so good, does it, Doctor? Well, well, not too good, but it's not hopeless. She has an unstable, imaginative mind subject to delusions which become very real to her. Oh, her obsession about the picture is not so bad. We all suffer occasionally from optical illusions. But hearing footsteps coming from the storeroom above her... The storeroom? How did you know there's a storeroom above her? Why, your wife told me about it. Oh, of course. Well, that storeroom hasn't been open in years. I guess there's no point in investigating it, is there? No, I don't think so. Those footsteps, like the moving figure in the painting, are all in her mind. Oh, well, her mother behaved just like that before she went mad, didn't she? Well, there's some similarity in... Say, you haven't been to the storeroom recently, have you? 
No, no, I just mentioned to you that it hasn't been opened in years. Oh, yes, yes, so you did, so you did. Oh, I just hope that Julia will be all well for her party tomorrow. Well, I had no idea she was having a birthday. How old will she be? She'll be 23. Really? Well, I must remember to get her a gift. <laughs> well, I guess I'll go to bed. So will I. See you in the morning. But I wasn't thinking about my birthday. When I stood alone inside my own room, panic, black unreasoning panic began to take hold of me. In wild haste, I, I began to undress, never looking at the picture and, <laughs> and talking to myself. Yes, talking to myself all the while. Now, now, I won't look at it. I'll, I'll take some pills and fall asleep. All I have to do is keep from looking at the picture. It can't do me any harm. If I don't see it, I, I mustn't even think of it. I know. I, I'll think about the trip I made to South America. Oh, it was a wonderful trip. The sunsets and... What was that? Footsteps. Those footsteps again. Oh, but I mustn't hear it. I, I mustn't hear it. It was a wonderful trip. The Blue Caribbean and, and oh, Rio is a beautiful city. And Sugarloaf Mountain and the music and, and the dancing way. It's not the footsteps. It's just my heart beating. I know. I'll, I'll close my eyes. Oh, please, please let me sleep. I don't want to look at the picture. I won't. I know what I'll see. He'll be closer to her. And maybe he'll have killed her. Oh, but I mustn't open my eyes. I mustn't. I won't. I... I... Oh, but I've got to look at it. Oh! He has moved. He's closer to the girl. I'm not dreaming. It's real. The girl. Why, it's me. That girl is me. Me, I... I can't stand it. I... I can't. I can't. Julia. Oh, you poor, poor dear girl. Oh, well, it's the oh. same thing, Laura, again oh. and again. I tried not to look at the picture, Laura. I tried so very hard. But it was hopeless. I had to. And the figure with the black scarf was inside the room. A knife in his hand, very close to the girl. But this time, the, the girl had turned around and... And it was my face. My face! Did you hear any footsteps? Yes. Yes, I heard them as soon as I got into the room, but... But the picture... It's the same. It hasn't changed. Look at it. Yes, the picture doesn't seem to have... What's the matter, Laura? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. There. There, did you hear it? Footsteps. It's probably a board creature. Now you go to sleep. I think everything will be all right in the morning. Oh, and you won't leave me? No, Julia. I'll stay here. Till you fall asleep. Oh, thank you, Laura. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is that you? Laura? Well, she's gone. She's left me alone. But I... I'm not alone. Something woke me. The picture. I... It's the picture. I must look at it again. If he's moved again. Oh, but... I must look straight at it. I'll look straight at it. Oh! Why, he, he's killed a girl. He stabbed her. 
She stabbed me. I'm the girl. And I've got to get out. Out. Oh. Oh, and now you're here. Why, you... You've come to life. In my room. The man in the black scarf. You... What do you want me to do? No. No, I... I won't run away. And I won't scream. What are you asking me? Do I want to spend the rest of my life in an asylum like my mother? No. No, I don't. I don't. You... You want me to open a window? Why, uh, yes. Yes, I'll open it. There. You say... You say it would be best for everybody if I jump? Oh, yes. It's the only way out. It's the only way, and... I'll do it. I'll do it now, without even thinking it. It will, will only take a, a moment. Julia, stop, stop, Julia. Harvey, Laura, what are you doing? We came just in time. I've got her, Harvey. She's safe. I, I, I'm safe? Oh. You can come out from behind that chair, my friend. Friend? Come out, or I'll shoot. I, I don't understand, my... My head's going around in a circle. I can circle. explain everything. I was merely observing, Julia. The procedure was a little unusual. I'll admit I'll it. do the explaining, Dr. Barrow. You tried to drive Julia crazy. He, he tried to drive me crazy? That's right. He tried to do it with the picture. You're all making a serious mistake. A mistake? Look at the picture. The figure is inside the room stabbing the girl. No, it wasn't your imagination, Julia. He painted several pictures. Each one of them, the, the figure closer to the girl. He used the storeroom upstairs. That's why you heard footsteps. I got suspicious when I found a black scarf in his room. And when I looked at the picture a little while ago, it was full of dust. I had dusted it off myself a few hours just before. Yes, and Dr. Barrow seemed to know there was a storeroom above you. I couldn't understand how he knew that. Because this old house of your father's had been closed for years. Oh, but why? Why should he want to drive me crazy? Because he's not Dr. Barrow. What? He's Ra Ralph Powell, your cousin, who disappeared many years ago. Everyone thought he was dead. He paid to be a picture originally, so it was easy for him. His plan was to drive you insane. Then contest the will, since he's the nearest blood relative. I had no intention of killing Julia. I swear I didn't. I just wanted to frighten her. Why, I almost... I almost jumped out of the window. I, I might have been dead right now. Lying dead outside. Well, don't think about it, Julia, dear. It's all over now. You're all right. You may not... I'm not insane. Oh, why, of course not, Julia. Oh, I almost forgot why it's Thursday. Why, yes. <laughs> Happy birthday, Julia. Yes. How does it feel to be 23 years old? <laughs> it, it feels wonderful. And so closes Fear Paints a Picture, in which Roma Wines have brought you Lana Turner as star of tonight's study in Suspense. Suspense is produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Before our star returns to the microphone, Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense, bring you a brief message from that noted authority on smart entertaining, Elsa Maxwell. A truly versatile wine for entertaining is Roma California Toque, served with coffee or dessert as a delightful finishing touch to your meals. Or set out Roma Toque with cheese and crackers when friends drop in. Everyone enjoys this velvety, flame-colored wine. Yet, good as they are, Roma wines cost only pennies a glass. So enjoy them often. Serve Roma with your everyday meals. Roma wine is delicious, and Roma quality never varies. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma... 
than any other wine. R-O-M-A, Roma Wine. The Roma Wine Company, with sales headquarters in San Francisco, joins with that city in welcoming the men of peace, the delegates to the United Nations Conference now in session. When their good work is completed, may the men of peace take back to their homes the memories of a friendly San Francisco, a city where live in harmony many people of many origins. A typically American city that speaks for all America when it says, May God bless you, men of peace, and speed you in your noble work. This is Lana Turner, and it was certainly a great pleasure and privilege to appear here tonight on this distinguished suspense stage, for you are accustomed to hearing the very best in dramatic radio entertainment. I appreciate very greatly the opportunity of playing a role somewhat different from the ones I usually do in pictures. Next week, my friend, that very excellent actor, John Garfield, will be your star of suspense. I know you will be listening, as I will. Lana Turner appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and is currently starred in their production, Keep Your Powder Dry. Next Thursday, you will hear John Garfield as star of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you the suspenseful play called Reprieve, starring Mr. John Garfield. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live. To your happiness and entertaining guests. To your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant. As Roma Wines bring you a remarkable tale of suspense. And with reprieve and with the performance of Mr. John Garfield, Roma Wines hope indeed to keep you in suspense. This morning my lawyer, Mr. Gurley, said he was trying to get me a reprieve. So I looked it up in a dictionary I got. It says, uh, reprieve to suspend temporarily the execution of a sentence upon and relief or cessation from pain or ill. <laughs> well, the first part, I guess Mr. Gurley can get. He knows all the rules. But the second part, cessation of pain, and that's, that's up to me. Maybe when I've spilled it all out and put it out on a table where I can look at it, why I'm hearing about the kid, about Lori, maybe then it'll come. Cessation of pain. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I can try. Okay. Name, Steve Hannibal. My old lady had a name something, I guess. She read, she read the name Stephen in a book. If she could read, which I doubt. Age 34, health excellent. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't want to sell me insurance. Because tonight I'm a state prisoner. 80483. Registered in cell 77 of the state penitentiary. That's the death cell. I'm in for murder. I was always the bright boy, but right now, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm mixed up, but good. And not about being here, and not about murder. The pen is my home, away from home. And murder, why, in my social set, murder is as common as chicken pox in PS-137. No, it's that, that last year of honest toil that threw me for a loss. Because I wasn't mixed up in at all in the, the night that Murph and Joe and I blew out of Chicago. That was a minor inconvenience right in line with the way I'd always lived. Let's see, it was really two years ago. Murph and Joe and I and the boys had knocked off a payroll. A good, clean job, except for a couple of guys getting hurt fatally. And the Murph was tipped off that one of the boys, he didn't know who, had squealed at a cops. So Murph knew we were hot and he came up to my room on Madison Street. I'm leaving town, Steve, tonight. Yeah, it's an idea, so am I. Yeah, yeah, we better blow. You and me and Joe, huh? 
And the uh, rest of the boys? Well, I can't take care of everybody, Steve. You know how it is. Sure, I know. You take care of the ones who you can't get along without and do your thinking for you. Oh, that ain't it, Steve. It, it, cut it. Well, okay. Well, we got around 20 grand. 23. Yeah, sure, sure, 23. With that dough, we can go down to Florida. Yeah? Yeah, and live down here all winter till the heat's off. Mm, you think that's a bright idea, don't you, Mike? Why, sure. Why not? Yeah, we take a big, shiny suite in a paradise hotel, pick ourselves some dolls, and... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, that's just what we're not going to do. What do you mean? We're not going to travel first class, spread dough around places like the paradise, accompanied by any dolls. Then why not? The dough is marked, bird brain. The serial numbers have been written down, and they'll be looking for that kind of dough in places where dough changes hands. Places like the paradise. Well, we could go to some other place, like a rooming house in St. Pete. Yeah, we could be smart if we put our minds on it. Yeah, like what? Like putting that package of dough out of circulation in the safety deposit box here. You know that's all the dough we got? Sure, but we can get along without it for the time being. It's worth a little discomfort to beat a murder rap. Okay, okay, say you're right. But we still have to leave town. We'll leave, Murph, but this is how. I figure they'll never look for you where there isn't a stall shower, so we'll fool them. We'll ride the rails. <laughs> can play that nine of hearts, Joe. Huh? Where? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to. <laughs> you were, huh? You never saw it. Another guy outsmarts himself in solitaire. Hey, it's cold in this boxcar, Steve. Yeah, just pick up the phone, Murph. Tell the management I'll give you more heat. All right, all right. I just said it was cold. At a time like this, be glad it's cold. Uh-uh, Joe. Mustn't cheat. I wasn't cheating. Oh, new game, huh? Where you slip the card under when you can't play it? Ah, uh, so what if I'm cheating? It's my skin, ain't it? You're absolutely right. Yeah, I wonder how, how many of the boys have been picked up. Well, I couldn't take care of everybody, Steve. Why, none of them been picked up. Why should they be? Oh, boy, there's that, that, that three I've been looking for. None of them been picked up. Uh, who's protecting them, Joe? Your fairy godmother? Oh, why would the cops pick them up? They know that Murph used the gun. Huh? I mean, uh, they probably guessed Murph was trigger man. Why, you did Shut up, Murph. What else did the cops probably guess, Joe? <laughs> How would I know, Steve? Honest, I only thought that maybe... Talk, uh, Joe. What else did they guess about me? Oh, nothing about you, Steve. Honest, they... they... Spill it. Spill it! I knew Murph was trigger man and... The... You screaming dirty and rat, the you. Said, no, no one else. Oh, honest, Steve. I didn't tell them anyone else was on the job. I, I thought if they picked up Murph, then, then you and me could... Hey, Steve... Steve, stop Murph. Get back, Murph. Let him finish. Go on, finish. I didn't squeal on you, Steve. Oh, you gotta believe me. Steve, you gotta... Steve, stop Murph. You can't let him. Steve, no, don't! That was Murph being trigger-happy. Joe went down sort of slow and quiet. Like the movies you see of a parachute settling on the ground. I think he twitched a little. I looked out and saw the train was slowing up and we were coming into a freight yard. And not 50 feet across the tracks, I could see a couple of guys heading our way who looked like railroad dicks. I thought fast, like always. Murph was hot, very hot. And being shy on brains, if they picked him up, he'd lead them to the payroll door like a homing pigeon inside of 24 hours. And I hadn't anything pinned on me for a few years. If anyone took the rap, it would have had to be me. If I ever wanted to smell any share of that 23 grand, and this was a rap I thought sure I could beat. Unluckily, I go up for a year for manslaughter, claiming self-defense. Lucky, I bluffed my way out of it altogether. I talked fast to Murph. And when the boxcar stopped opposite those dicks, I had Murph's gun in my hand. How many of you guys in there? Three, mister. Hey, I'll pile out, boys. It's the end of the... Hey. What's the matter, buddy? One of those guys has a gun. What are you doing with that gun, brother? Uh, I, I I don't know. And what's wrong with the other guy? He, he shot him. Huh? I was over at the other end, minding my own business, and these two guys were yelling at each other, and he took Okay, took okay, now drop that gun, mister. I'm coming in. Is he dead? No, oh, dead as a mackerel. All right, mister, tell me about it. I, I I don't know what happened. It was his gun. It just went off. Yeah. Did you see it? You over there. I didn't see nothing. I tell you, I was down at the other end of the car, minding my own business. They've been yelling at each other for hours. 
I didn't pay any attention to the gun went off just now. Honest, I don't know anything. Okay, to... okay, keep your shirt on. Looks like you're in trouble, mister. I tell you, I don't know what happened. Yeah, leave it to headquarters, buddy. Yeah. Maybe you'll remember better at headquarters. I don't know what happened. All right, Dreamy, no matter what you remember, the rap is murder. Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star John Garfield, whom you've heard in the first act of Reprise, which is Roma Wines' presentation tonight of Suspense. Between the acts of Suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Have you ever noticed the knack some women have for making their guests feel welcome? One such woman is the renowned hostess, Elsa Maxwell. And here's what she suggests you do the next time friends come to dinner. Serve well-chilled Roma California sherry. Before dinner and later in the evening. You'll find glorious amber-golden Roma sherry is a gracious touch that's sure to get the meal off to a good start and adds to the evening's pleasure. And don't worry about fancy glasses. It's the wine that's important. So be sure it's that good Roma wine. Because Roma wines are so reasonably priced, any family can afford to serve them regularly. Distinctive Roma wines are grown in California's choicest vineyards. Beginning with choice wine grapes, picked and gently pressed at the top of their flavor richness, then watched over and developed with all the ancient winemaker's skill of Roma's famed wineries. The quality of Roma wines never varies. Always the same tempting flavor. Yet all this goodness is yours for only pennies a glass. No wonder more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A. Roma Wines. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage John Garfield as Steve Hannibal in Reprieve. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I'd been in worse spots. The charge was murder, first degree. But I knew I could cut that down. The best thing was to tame Murph loose without checking on him, and Joe was unidentified. I dreamed up a name I said I knew Joe by, read something or other, and it went down all right. And so then I settled down for what might be an extended vacation. A vacation that would earn me half of 23 grand. Only, only one thing bothered me. It seems the town we picked to kill Joe in was going through one of those reform spasms, and the papers were really lathered up. And my case was made to order for them, a crime they could get holy about without stepping on any local toes. While I was waiting trial, they fried me good, and I'd burned about it. So that's why I didn't exactly clap hands when they told me a reporter was coming in to see me. And I didn't shout hallelujah either when I saw it was a doll. Sharp looking, all right, but still, just a doll. Uh, hello. Hi, chick. You're Steve Hannibal? Yeah. I'm Laurie Ware of the News Press. Uh-huh. I'd like to get your story. Look, sister, your job is writing. If you can't do it alone, you shouldn't have had the job. I mean your side of the story. No, isn't that nice of you to take an interest? Oh, please. Uh, I wish you'd listen to me. Go peddle a paper somewhere else. Please. Don't you understand English? Look, I don't blame you for being suspicious of me. You see, I know the papers haven't been fair to you. I know they've been trying your case before it comes to trial. So it happens every day. And I feel sure there's more to this case than has been told. I got a feeling that... <laughs> you got to be careful of those feelings, baby. I have a hunch that you didn't do it. Maybe you were framed. So, uh, what if I was? Oh, I don't know how much I can do. Except I know that if you have a story, I can get it printed. And, uh, and, uh, that will make all the difference? I don't know. At least when it comes to picking your jury, there'll be some people in this town who haven't made up their minds. Well, uh, there's something in that. Well? Okay. I'll tell you the real McCoy truth. Oh, that's wonderful, Steve. I'll take it down. Well, there isn't much to tell. I was just what the papers call an innocent bystander. I was asleep when it happened. Right. How many men were in the boxcar? Before I went to sleep, there were six or seven. When the shots woke me up, I saw two guys jump off. We were moving pretty slow then because the train was coming into the yard. But at the inquest, the police said you were holding the gun. Yeah, sure I was, yeah. The cops yelled at me and I saw... Well, I saw I was holding it. Someone had planted on me while I was half asleep and... 
And the old boy in the corner said I'd done it. Yes, he, he said that you were fighting with I know, him. that I'd been fighting with Red. Well, I don't think he meant to frame me, but he, he kind of got me mixed up with one of the guys who scrammed. That's it, Steve. That's what, baby? If you'd done it, you would have jumped off. You wouldn't just stand there waiting to be arrested with a gun in your hand, or, or you would have thrown the gun out. Well, I will claim I didn't have time, but... But, uh, it's an angle. And I'll pound it, Steve. I'll get your lawyer. Yeah. I guess I'll, I'll need one. You'll need all the help you can get. What a dog. <laughs> Sold on me, even before she got the pitch. And what made my hand all aces was that the girl could really write. She had the news press giving me more space than the World Series. Well, the other papers had to pick it up. And by the time my trial came up, why, I was local hero number one. An orphan child. The whole town wanted to adopt. So no one, least of all of me, was much surprised when the jury filed back into the jury box with their decision. And the gentlemen of the jury reached a verdict. We have, Your Honor. Will you read the verdict? We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty of charge. <laughs> oh, Steve. <laughs> well, your word, kitten. What do they say? The pen is mightier than the sword? Uh Oh, I'm so happy I could help you. Well, you don't see me crying, honey. Oh, you want to dance? Yeah, but... Come on. I want to talk. Have you got a home you're going to or, or a job? Now, look, kid, you've been Girl Scout enough today. Let's dance. Please tell me, Steve. I'm worried about you. I'm going to winter in California and summer in Maine. You haven't any place to go. Say America first. That's my motto. Steve, I don't want to butt in, but... Well, Harry Singles will give you a job. Yeah? <laughs> Doing what? In the circulation department. Ah, uh, you're kidding. Well, it wouldn't be such a good job to start, but I know you could work up, Steve, and you'd like Harry. Uh, nine hours a day, five days a week, is that it? Five and a half days. Steve Annabelle, punching a time clock. I, I suppose I get a social security number and everything, huh? Don't you have one? Unemployment insurance income tax? Well, that's a lot of legality. Legality? Yeah, no, skip it, kid, and let me think. You know... You know, I might, I might just take a whirl at that job. Oh, Steve, I think that's wonderful. It's not so much the job, but if you and I uh, have a lot of unfinished business, baby, and we can't get it all done in one day. Right now, I want to dance. Come on, baby. That was the old brain working, see? You see, I had covered on drifting not a little safe to join up with Murph. I didn't know where he'd gone, but I... I figured I'd be able to find him when the heat was off. But when Laurie said job, it was kind of new angle. I could stay right here in town, pull down enough dough to get by, and maybe a little on the side. It was the safest spot I could possibly be in for a long time. Uh, I went down to the newspaper office with Laurie the next morning and was hired. First time in my life such a thing ever happened to me. Harry Singles, he was a sharp guy from any racket. Working with him, I got so I didn't mind. Of course, the hours were very regular, all daytime, and I had to put on a clean shirt now and then. But always I had that 23 grand to think about. And the kid, Laurie, I couldn't have squared a better doll in Chicago, New York, any place. Only sometimes, sometimes you made me nervous. Let's not go out tonight, Steve. Let's stay here in my place, huh? I'll cook something. I don't know. It don't seem right. <laughs> what doesn't seem right? <laughs> Seeing a doll with class and an apron. Well, I, I can't get used to it. Oh, you will eventually. After all, you're used to being a working man now. Well, no, I don't be too sure, baby. Steve, you know you love it? I don't know. Sometimes I get the itch to move on. Forget the itch, Steve. A rolling stone gathers no moss. Yeah, so they tell me. But I saw some moss once, and I still wonder, what does a stone want with moss anyway? <laughs> See what I mean? Lori kept telling me how much I liked being a pillar of society, so that sometimes even I began to wonder. And then Harry, Harry started shoving raises at me and titles. Well, inside of no time, I was a district manager. Then I sat down and I figured the dough angle, and that gave me a shock. Because even if it was legal, I was making more dough week in and week out than I had with Murph and the boys. Well, the Chicago stick-up stayed hot, and I didn't hear from Murph, so I let it ride and kept working. Along about then, 
The papers were in a lather again all the reforms, and the town was crawling with rackets, and Lori was working on the story. Well, one night, Lori was typing a story in her room, and I was in the living room waiting for her to finish. I'll be with you in a minute, Steve. One more paragraph. And that's uh, finished for tonight? Yeah, yeah. Finished for tonight. Oh, I have something to show you. Come on in here. <laughs> what is it? Buying hats again? Oh, it's a letter I got in the mail. Right here on the desk. Oh, the local rules are moving in, huh? Much more exciting. Please. Lay off, or we'll measure you for a coffin. You have 24 hours to quit your job. <laughs> First time I ever got anything like that. You want to read my answer? Your answer? Yeah, my article for tomorrow morning. I've written all about the note and why it was sent to me. Yeah? Well, why do you figure? Well, there's an out-of-town mobster who's moved in on the local rackets, and he's making a good thing of it. I found out about him three days ago, and I've really tracked him down. Yeah, who is he? Well, here he goes by the name of Dude Wrangler. But I knew that was an alias. I finally find out that he's a former big-time operator from Chicago. He wanted there for a lot of things, including murder. Yeah? I'm going to print it in the paper, and he'll be picked up just about the time the papers hit the street. Oh, uh, you, you, you told the cops, huh? Uh, not yet. I, I thought you were down with me. And uh, uh, what, what, what's the guy's name in Chicago? I don't know all of it. He, he headed up a gang there. They call him Murph. I got that roller coaster feeling, only worse. I still can't figure it. She was only a half-baked doll moving into territory where anyone would likely get clipped. Why should I care? But something funny happened to me, and she could see it. Steve? Steve, what's the matter? No, you, you got to lay off, Lori. You, you got to quit. Because of that ridiculous note? Don't ask me why. Just quit. Oh, I certainly won't quit. Don't you see? That's just what he wants me to do. Okay, I'll tell you. I know Murph. You know him? And he's trigger-happy. He's a rattlesnake in pants. Well, then that's all the more reason Listen why... Listen to me. I... I don't know why I'm doing this. I never figured... Well, I never missed figuring percentages before in my life, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you before I wise up. What, Steve? You remember when you got my true story when I, when I was up for that murder rap? Of course I remember. Well, that was all a pipe dream, sweetheart. Something for the books. You lied to me? You did kill Red? His name wasn't Red. He was a slimy, evil little punk from a mob I ran with. He named Joe Tonelli. Mob? And he wasn't killed by me. He was killed by another guy who, who was in the car. He was killed by Murph. I covered for Murph because he was hot. Steve, then you... Listen. You... They want you for those jobs, too. They... Shut up. I'm listening. What? What is it, Steve? I... Uh, I thought I, I heard someone in the other room and the door closed. You're just imagining it, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I guess I, I guess I am. This being a squealer takes my skin off. Oh, Steve. But you got the story, baby, short and sweet. Now, you can do what you want with it. Quit your job and live, or turn me in, too. What a doll. She cried on the front of my shirt, and then she smiled. And she called Harry Siegel with me sitting there and told him she quit. She told him she was getting married the next morning to me, and, well, I played along. Then I left her, and after telling her to button her lip and keep the door locked, I started to go find Murph to check on the 23 grand and put him wise so he'd lay low. I could see he still needed me to think for him, but, but there, there was something wrong, something very wrong. I, I felt like I was cracking up, I, so, well, I, I let it ride until the morning. I, I was climbing, out, climbing up the stairs to pick up Lori at nine on the dot. And for some reason, I was feeling pretty good. Open up, chick. It's me. Open. Hello, Murph. Still trigger happy, huh? Hello, Steve. And you don't have to call me names. You're up kind of early, aren't you, Murph? I was making a little call on your doll. Yeah, I see you was. She wasn't a bad-looking doll, Steve. You didn't have to plug her. She quit her job. Yeah. I didn't know about that. Well, still, she knew too much. She wasn't going to use it, Murph. Maybe. You told her about Joe. You shouldn't have done that, Steve. So it was you I heard in here last night, huh? No kidding. You heard me? Yeah, I heard the door close. And you heard me tell her, huh? Yeah. 
This, uh, working legal has given you bad habits, Steve. But I'll forget it. Come here. Come over here. Just look what she'd have wrote. Bill Ringer. Alias Murph. Alias we don't know how many other names. Wanted in a half a dozen cities for murder, larceny, and kidnapping. That wouldn't have looked good. She wasn't going to use it. No. Well, don't let it worry you. Well, that's about time we picked that 23 grit. Hey. Hey, what's up, Steve? You shouldn't have put your gun down, Murph. What's eating you? You shouldn't have put it down. Steve, you're nuts. He says I'm going to kill you, Murph. I always wanted to kill you. And before I wise up, I'm going to do it. That time, that time the neighbors heard it. I didn't care. I kept pumping lead. When they came in, I... I was standing over Murph holding the gun. Same gun he used to kill the kid. So the cops got me for both of them. <laughs> both of them. And for Joe and the payroll job, too. They really thought they hit that jackpot with me. I didn't get many arguments. It wasn't any use. But see what I mean? I'm mixed up. You see? I've always been a sharp guy. I could have beat the game. Murph was right when he knocked off the kid. She did tell him, well, she did know too much. It's the way things worked out in our set. Oh, why should I get a case of highs over a dog getting drilled? Well, I can't, I can't figure it out. And, well, now I'm trimming my, my fingernails waiting for Mr. Curley to get a reprieve. <laughs> and I, I'm mixed up about that, too. Because in a dictionary, it's a word that's got kind of two meanings. And the way I feel, they don't mesh. They cancel each other out. To suspend temporarily the execution of sentence upon and relief for cessation of pain or ill. <laughs> well, any time now. Hello, Mr. Gurley. Hello, Steve. That's the good word. My boy... Turn your collar around, Mr. Gurley. You're going to talk like that. Spill it. What wasn't any use, Steve. No reprieve. Sorry. Uh-huh. So I, uh... I got until 6 a.m. No reprieve. No reprieve? I wouldn't say that, Mr. Gurley. I draw definition number two. I get secession of pain. And so closes Reprieve, in which Roma Wines have brought you John Garfield, a star of tonight's study in Suspense. Suspense is produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Before our star returns to the microphone, let me say a word for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. Genuine cordiality, unaffected simplicity. These are the qualities that have made Elsa Maxwell's hospitality famous the world over. In her own words, Friendliness and hospitality begin at home. And there's no better or simpler way than with a glass of distinctive Roma wine. I suggest Roma Vermouth. Chilled as a most delightful aperitif, or next time you serve cocktails, flatter your guests by using this delicious California Roma Vermouth. You'll find that zestful, full-bodied Roma Vermouth brings delicious flavor to your favorite mixed drink. The goodness of Roma Vermouth comes from using almost a hundred different herbs and specially selected vermouth-type wines. So I say, whenever the occasion calls for vermouth, either sweet or dry. Be sure to serve delightful Roma Vermouth, made and bottled in the heart of California's famous vineyards. You can depend on Roma Vermouth and all other Roma wines to be always delicious, always pleasing to the palate of unvarying fine quality. This week is being celebrated as National Restaurant Week. Let us all join in saluting America's restaurateurs who, despite food and personnel shortages, are doing such a splendid job. This is John Garfield with a message from your government. 
Four million crop corps workers are needed to help the regular farm labor forces harvest the 1945 crop. We face the most serious farm labor shortage since the beginning of the war. Everyone with or without farm experience can help. Crop corps work is war work which will pay you the prevailing farm wages. Get in touch with your county agricultural agent or local government employment office. Thank you. John Garfield appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers Studios and will soon be seen as Al Schmidt in their production, Pride of the Marines. Next Thursday, you will hear Mr. Dana Andrews as star of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... with one stone, starring Mr. Dana Andrews. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you a remarkable tale of suspense. And with two birds with one stone, and with the performance of Mr. Dana Andrews, Roma Wines hope indeed to keep you in suspense. You ready? <laughs> That's a boy. Loud. You want to surprise him. You don't want him to hear it before his birthday, do you? All right, all right, all right. I'll put the recorder on, and you're only to speak when I tell you to. Now, do you understand? Now, here we go. Walter? Hello, Walter. This is Eleanor Walter, and this... This is Tracy. And we're saying happy birthday from your loving wife, and your faithful dog, Tracy. <laughs> Isn't Tracy a smart dog, Walter? He can talk, can't you, Tracy? Speak up. Speak up. Tell us everything you know. You didn't know Tracy could talk, did you? But he can. He knows lots of things. Tell us everything you know, Tracy. Now, that's enough. That's enough, Tracy. You wanted to hear it? There. Now, the record's finished. You'll mark the label. Not... To be played until May 17th, 1945. Eleanor and Tracy. There. Tomorrow we'll play it for, for him the first thing in the morning. I bet you're the first dog that's ever made a record. Now, what do you know about that, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no. Uh, yeah, yes, dear. What are you doing? Uh, nothing. Waiting for you. What's all the racket about? Just Tracy and I roughhousing. I wish you wouldn't do that when I'm trying to write. I'm sorry, darling. I thought you were finished. Well, I'm not. You said you'd work till 11, then we'd take Tracy for a walk. It's after 11 now. I didn't think I was going to get stuck. Oh. We belong? How do I know how long I'll be? Hard work for me to write a play. I'm not Tolstoy. I'm sorry, darling. I just can't seem to say anything anymore without getting on your nerves. We, we didn't used to be like this. Maybe we're not like we used to be. <laughs> Poor Tracy, he wants to go. Well, we'll never go unless I get that second act curtain fixed. I wish I could help, dear. Uh, maybe you can, Eleanor. What would you say if you were thinking of committing suicide and you didn't want anyone to know exactly what your plans were? What would be the, the last thing you'd say to your husband, for instance? I don't know. I never thought about such things. <laughs> Tracy, express. Well, Walter, couldn't you work it out tomorrow? You'll be fresh in the morning. I said I'd finish this, and I'm going to, if it takes all night. Well, Tracy and I'll have to go for a walk alone. <laughs> come on. Come on, Tracy. Come on, boy. Come on. Oh, Eleanor, you said you wanted to help me. 
Well, if I thought I could. You helped me the other day. <laughs> Only with what your leading lady's dress looked like. About the suicide. Oh, first of all, why is this girl committing suicide? She's she's tired. Bored. Oh, darling. No wonder you can't make it convincing. People don't just commit suicide because they're bored. Yes, they do. People do even worse than that when they're bored. Well, Walter, I've been bored lots of times, but I've never even I thought... Can, I can see you're not going to be much help. I'll help you. What's the girl like? she married? Yes. Is she in love with her husband? Well, she doesn't know anymore. How could she not know? Eleanor, you may not understand her, but you've got to take my word for it. Well, let, let's see. Um, would she say... Eleanor, let's try it this way. You know, sometimes the very first things you think of are the best. Just say whatever you think she'd say without stopping. You know a little about the character. Just say whatever comes into your head. Now, try it. I won't interrupt you. All right, but... I... Oh, Eleanor, did they fix the recording machine today? Yes, yeah, why? Have you tried it out yet? No. No, I, I was just going to. I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll try it out by cutting a record of what you say now. It'll be spontaneous, unrehearsed. I've thought too much about it. Maybe that's why I can't do it. But yours will be fresh, and we'll play it back and change it and work on it after we hear it. Well, wouldn't it be better, darling, if... Please, we... try it my way. Or you'll have a chance to think too much about it. Oh, come on. Oh, you've got a record right there, haven't you? Is there anything on it? Well, um, one side blank. All right. Come on. And, uh, make it emotional. Convincing. <laughs> you ready? All right, go ahead. <clears throat> Maybe it's foolish of me to do what I'm thinking of doing. But I don't see any other way. I'm confused and... and bored. I guess bored most of all. And maybe what I'm going to do will solve things for both of us. Goodbye. <laughs> That was good, Eleanor. I can get a lot of ideas from that. Is that the end of the record? Yes. You see, you have helped me after all. <laughs> I thought it was terrible. I'm no writer, Walter. It was all right. Well, of course, I may change a word here and there, but it was all right. Really? Well, can we go walking now? Yes. Get your coat. <laughs> all right, baby. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Eleanor, would you mind if we left Tracy? Huh? Oh, why? I, I feel so tired. I thought I'd like to stop at Joe's for some coffee. We can take him in with us. No, we can't. Remember what Joe said last time we had him in there? Oh, I've forgotten. I don't see why he has to act that way about dogs. We just spoiled Joe. Just because he gave you music lessons as a child, he thinks he can treat us any way he wants. Oh, no, Eleanor, he has his customers to think about. People don't like to have dogs hanging around an eating place. It isn't Joe's fault. Oh, poor Tracy. He knows he's not wanted. Well, that's the way Joe feels about it. We'll only stay a few minutes and then we'll come back for Tracy. All right, I suppose we have to. Tracy, you wait now. We won't be long, then we'll come back for you. Oh, we'd take you now, boy, but we can. Look, Walter, it's almost as if he understands. Yeah, I expect him to up and answer you one of these days. Oh, come on, huh? Let's go so we can hurry back. We'll only be 20 minutes, boy. <laughs> you see him look at the clock? I thought I saw him look at his wristwatch. Oh, fool, come on. <laughs> No, Joe's got a nerve not wanting dogs in here. Look at some of these customers. Don't be bitter. Well, I don't think we ought to come in here anymore, even if he is an old friend of yours. It'd break his heart if we get to quit coming here. You know that, Eleanor. How else could he worry about me and keep an eye on me if we didn't come in here once in a while? Look, they've got new records in the jukebox. It's about time. See what they've got. <laughs> you say new? Blue heaven. Together. Gloomy Sunday. Gloomy Sunday. I haven't heard that one in a long time. Do you like to? Let's order first. Let's sit at the table. Make him wait on us for a change. No dogs allowed. He's got a nerve. Honestly, I've never... Here he oh. comes. Now, don't start anything, Eleanor. Well, I'm off of Joe, and I don't care if he knows it. Uh, uh, good evening, Walter, Mrs. Faber. What'll it be tonight, huh? Well, hello, Joe. Just coffee. Well, oh, you got any of that seven layer? Yes, I think I can fix you up. Nothing for me. I uh, haven't seen you in quite a while. You're not going to see me in here anymore at all, Joe. Huh? Oh, why not? Oh, Joe, never mind. 
We're in a hurry. Well, why do you say that, Mrs. Faber? Never mind. I'm going to play a record, Walter. I'll be right back. What is the matter with your wife? Maybe I did something? No. No, Joe. It's nothing you've done. But you notice it, too. I notice what? How depressed she is. Yes, but the why? If you could understand women, Joe, you wouldn't be in this business. Well, that record she's playing. In Hungary, they call that the suicide song. Bring us some coffee, will you, Joe? Maybe that'll pick her up. Yeah, all right, Walter. Even if you don't like old Joe, you've got to admit he certainly bakes a wonderful cake. I'm not interested. Let's go. What's your hurry? I don't like this place, and I'm not coming back anymore. Shh, not so loud. I don't care if he does hear me. Well, good night, folks. Good night. Where are you going? We have to go back after Tracy. Look, Eleanor, it's starting to rain. If we go back now, we won't get our walk in at all. Oh, Walter, but we promised him. Let's just run down by the wharf, shall we? And if it doesn't rain too hard, we can go back for Tracy. Oh, maybe you're right. Gee, it is beginning to come down. Come on. The river's wonderful when it's raining. Well, maybe we better go back. We won't get wet if we make it a quick one. Come on. Walter, let's go back, Walter. Come on, Eleanor. Come on. Walter. Walter. <laughs> I'm just soaking wet. Now, if this is a game... This isn't a game, oh, Eleanor. Walter, you frighten me. Standing in the shadows like that. Come on, now let's go home. I'm just Look freezing. Look at the river. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, please, let's go home. It's dark and mysterious. And dirty. Let's go back. It's not dirty, Eleanor. And if it is, it's dull, boring people who've made it that way. Whatever it is, I'm cold. I'm wet. Eleanor. Yes? Come over here. No, I'm going home. Look over the edge here. The way the water washes over the piling. Oh, please, Walter, let's go home. Just a minute longer. Then we'll go. All right. But come. Walter? Walter, what... Walter, what's wrong with you? Walter, let me go. Walter, no! No! Drown, you dumb fuck. Well, it's two birds with one stone, I guess. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star Dana Andrews, whom you've heard in the first act of Mel Dinelli's Two Birds with One Stone which is Roma Wine's presentation tonight of Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. To millions all over the world, the name Elsa Maxwell stands for gracious hospitality. Her suggestions on entertaining are eagerly sought, and here's an especially timely one. Planning a simple dinner for friends during these days of food rationing calls for imagination in making plain dishes temptingly attractive. I suggest the simple, inexpensive touch that Roma lends, making party fare out of the most ordinary supper. Serve cool Roma California Burgundy with the meal. If possible, too, dine by candlelight. The tart piquancy of deliciously robust Roma Red Burgundy and the soft, flattering lighting heightens the pleasure of dining. That's a grand suggestion of Elsa Maxwell's dinner by candlelight with distinctive Roma Burgundy. Truly an appealing idea. Like all Roma wines, Roma Burgundy is of unvarying goodness. The goodness of selected grapes, guided to flavor fullness by the ancient wine skill of Roma's famed wineries. Serve Roma regularly. It costs only pennies a glass. Remember... More Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A. Roma wine. 
And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood sound stage Dana Andrews as Walter Faber in Two Birds with One Stone, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> Have you seen my wife? Well, not since you were here a while ago. She's disappeared, Joe. What do you mean? We went for a walk after we left here. In the rain? She insisted. You saw how she was acting. Yes? But well, she got away from me, down by the wharf. I couldn't find her. I thought maybe she'd come back here. I haven't seen her, Walter. Joe. Joe, will you help me try and find her? Oh, sure. Nick, I'm going off. Take over, will you? I can't think of any place else to look. What am I going to do? Oh, she will turn up, don't worry, Walter. I don't know. She's been acting so strange lately. What about the dog? What do you mean? Uh, was she with her? Well, yes, it... yes, he was. Oh, she will be all right then. He will look after her. Let's go to your apartment. She might have gone back there. She might as well, I guess. Well, but she was sore at me. I, I don't think she would have gone back home. Well, we better have a look anyway. <laughs> Huh? What's the matter? Uh, the door to your apartment. It's open. Didn't you lock it when you left? Why, I didn't lock it, but I remember closing it. Maybe she has come back. No, she couldn't have. I, I mean, uh... Well, come on. Let's go in. Eleanor! Oh, there's no one here. I look in the kitchen. You you go into the bedroom, Joe. Yeah. Walter. What is it? Come here. In the bedroom. What's the matter? Look on the bed there. No. It couldn't I be. I thought you said the dog was with her. He was. Yes, he was with her. Well, then she must be here, too. No, she couldn't be. Why not? I mean, uh... Oh, yes. Uh, Eleanor! Eleanor! Look at how still that poor dog lies. Maybe it's been hurt. Well, he's soaking wet. It was raining, wasn't it? Yes, it was raining. What's the matter, Tracy? What is the matter, boy? <laughs> I guess he's all right. But the way he just stares at us. Joe! What's the matter? I, I just remembered. Yeah? A record. She made it tonight just before we left the house. She wouldn't let me hear it. She wouldn't tell me what it was. She said I could listen to it after we came back from our walk. It's, it's in here on the machine. Well, we had better play it, Walter. <laughs> Maybe it's foolish of me to do what I'm thinking of doing, but I don't see any other way. I'm confused and bored. I guess bored most of all. And maybe what I'm going to do will solve things for both of us. Goodbye. Hmm. Well, we had better call the police, Walter. What for? To have them look for her. Oh, oh yes. Is, uh, is there anything else you can think of, Mr. Paper? No. That's all. Then you believe the recording was intended as a, a suicide note? Yes. Uh-huh. Well, I'd like to talk to Mr. Weiss here alone for a minute, please. I'll... I'll be in the bedroom if you need me. All right. Mr. Weiss, how long have you known Mr. Faber? For many years. I gave him music lessons as a child. Can you add anything to what he's already told us? No. She was acting, just like he said. I, I noticed it the moment she walked into my place. She's usually very friendly. And uh, she said something about my not seeing her anymore. Anything else? Oh, that's all. Mm-hmm. And you did hear them play the record, Gloomy Sunday. Yes. Well, we've had a couple of suicide cases where that song has come up before. I think Mr. Faber better prepare himself for the worst. I'm afraid so. Yeah. Well, I'll go along now. Faber will probably want to come with us, but I think he'd better stay here. There's no telling what we'll find. Is uh, there anything I can do? Yes. 
I suggest that you get in touch with his family. I think he ought to have someone here with him. Uh, he has no family. Oh? Then perhaps you would stay. Well, of course. Well, we'll call you the minute we have any news. Good night. Joe. Yes? Did the officer go? Yes, he did. But I think I should have gone with him. No, no, no. He said for you to stay here. He will call us. Walter, have you noticed Tracy through all of this? What about him? I don't know. It, it, it's depressing just to look at him. That's because you don't like dogs, Joe. Oh, you're mistaken, Walter. I do like dogs. I never did know why you asked me to tell your wife not to bring him into my place anymore. Would you uh, like a drink? Uh, no, no, thanks. That's strange the way that dog follows you around. Every move you make. It's almost as if you were trying to say something. He's all right. Come here, Tracy. Come here. Come here, Tracy. Hmm. He was uh, her dog, wasn't he? Yes, she bought him. His eyes are almost like a human's, aren't they? Yeah. Stop it, Tracy. Stop following me around. Oh, you ought to get hold of yourself, Walter. Yes. Yes, I... I guess I'm pretty upset with all that's happened. Oh, Tracy is too. He knows something's wrong. He doesn't know anything. Will you stop it, Joe? Well, I'm, I'm sorry. We both need sleep. Well, that couch is pretty comfortable, Joe. Oh, yes. That will be fine for me. What about uh, Tracy? He usually sleeps on that chair over there. Well, I, I'll go on to bed. Good night. Oh, well, good night, Walter. No, Tracy. Don't follow me. Over here in your chair. You know about your chair. Go on, get away from me. Joe. Joe. Uh, just a minute. Joe. Were you talking in there? Did you call me? No, I was asleep. You must have heard Tracy scratching at the door here. Joe. Keep him out of here, will you? Keep him in the living room. Yes, I will. So I've, I've got to get rid of that dog first thing tomorrow. Maybe my wife and I will take him. No. Why not? It'd, it'd be too hard seeing him around. I don't want to see him anymore. Oh. I don't want him around. Well, you, you better try and get some sleep. You can talk about it in the morning. Yes. Well, good night. Good night. Come on, Tracy. Come on, boy. Come on. Yes. All right. Come on, boy. Here we go. Hey, he, he has got something sticky around his neck here. <laughs> he ought to have a bath. Oh, I'll get it, Walter. You stay in here. Oh, oh, officer. I've, uh, I've bad news, Mr. Weiss. We found her. Where's Mr. Faber? In the bedroom. You'll have to help me break it to him. Where, where did you find her? In the river. She must have struck her head on the pilings when she jumped off the wharf. Oh, no. She was in pretty bad shape. Her clothes were torn and her arms were badly lacerated. We can't figure that out. Well, we'd better go and do Mr. Faber. Yes. What is it? Uh, Wal have you... Walter, we have uh, very bad news. I'm you. sorry, Mr. Faber. There's nothing you can do now. It's as we suspected suicide, but there's, there's no need of you coming down. There was identification on her, but we'd like to see you in the morning. I'll be down. All right. Good night. No. Uh, Officer. Yes? Would you do me a favor? Well, certainly. This was her dog. Yes. And I... I don't want him around anymore with, with her gone. Could you... Could you take him with you now? Well, this is a bit irregular. What would you want done with him? Just... Just get him out of here. I, I don't care what you do with him. Oh, I know you're upset, Walter, but don't do this to the dog. Decide about it tomorrow. You may feel differently then. Don't stand there and argue with me, Joe. I know what I want. Get him out of here, I tell you. Uh, I guess you had better take him, officer. You'll have to carry him, I guess. Yeah? Well, it's too bad. They'll probably put him out of the way. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Goodbye, Tracy. Goodbye. <laughs> Eleanor Walter, hmm? and this, speak, speak, this is Tracy, and we're saying happy birthday. 
from your loving wife and your faithful dog, Tracy. <laughs> Isn't Tracy a smart dog, Walter? He can talk. Can't you, Tracy? Speak up. <laughs> Tell us everything you know. You didn't know Tracy could talk, did you? But he can. He knows lots of things. Tell us everything you know, Tracy. <laughs> Joe! Yes? Joe, did you hear? Yes. Happy birthday, Walter. How did you know it was my birthday? Eleanor told me. No. Eleanor's dead. Walter, you have had a bad dream. Wake up. Dream? Oh, Joe, I dreamt I... What did you dream? I dreamt I... I murdered her. I... I mean, I... Why did you do it, Walter? It was a trick. Why did you do it, Walter? You, you won't tell anyone, Joe. You won't, will you? I, I had to do it, Joe. I, I hated her. I knew I'd never be rid of her. I, I am going for the police. Stay where you are, Joe. I've got a gun here. So you didn't give Tracy to the police after all. You wanted him here to drive me crazy. You knew all along. He suspected me from the beginning. I suspected nothing until a while ago when I played the other side of this record. Now, put that gun down, Walter. Let the dog in. Go on, let him in. If it hadn't been for him, I'd have never known about Eleanor. But I'm going to fix both of you now. You couldn't get away with one murder. Now I suppose you think you will get away with two. Pick the dog up. Go on, pick him up. Uh, That's right. Now sit over there with him, in your lap. Now hold him close if you're so fond of him. It's going to be two birds with one stone again. Only this time, I'll make it stick. Drop that gun, paper. If that dog hadn't gotten away from us, you'd be a goner, Mr. Weiss. And if I hadn't followed this dog back here, I wouldn't have overheard your very interesting confession, Mr. Faber. <laughs> well, okay. I guess I'm even a worse playwright than I thought. Come on, Tracy. <laughs> Let's go for a walk. I'll walk you down to the station. That's funny. <laughs> Listen to him. This is the first time he's ever wanted to go for a walk with me. So closes Two Birds with One Stone, in which Roma Wines have brought you Dana Andrews as star of tonight's study in Suspense. Suspense is produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Before our star returns to the microphone, let me say a word for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. The world-famous hostess, Miss Elsa Maxwell, knows all the niceties of entertaining. And she has this to say about simple wartime hospitality. Good friend and good Roma California sherry. These are the makings of a pleasant evening. Roma Sherry is ideal for any occasion, before dinner with appetizers or during friendly visits. You and your guests will enjoy the light, nut-like flavor of glorious amber-colored Roma Sherry, especially served cool. Delicious Roma wines cost only pennies a glass. Serve them often. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And the next time you use vermouth, choose Roma vermouth. Zestful, full-flavored Roma vermouth is blended and developed with all the traditional winemaking skill of Roma wineries. Is made and bottled in the heart of California's famous vineyards, yet surprisingly low-priced. Try both sweet and dry types of Roma vermouth soon, won't you? This is Dana Andrews. I certainly enjoyed appearing this evening on Suspense. And I'll be looking forward to next week's show, which will star my good friend, Herbert Marshall. In the meantime, remember this. We've got the biggest home front effort of the war facing us right now. It's buying more bonds during the current Seventh War loan, more than we've ever bought before. Last year, by this time, we'd had two war loan drives. This drive, the Seventh War loan, is the first this year. But it must do the job of two, for there'll be only two war loan drives in 1945. So buy more and larger war bonds now. Dana Andrews appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and will soon be seen in their production, State Fair. Next Thursday, you will hear Mr. Herbert Marshall, a star of Suspense.
Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.